So I wanted to go back to my predictions from last season and compare them to how the standings actually looked at the end of the season. So uh, I'm going to go division by division and uh, put up the logos on the screen as I thought they would finish and then compare to what actually happened. I don't actually remember most of what I predicted, so this could be interesting. We're going to start with the North Division, a division that obviously doesn't exist anymore and probably will never exist again. Um... So I had the teams in this order. I had Toronto first, then Calgary, then Winnipeg, then Edmonton, then Montreal, then Vancouver, and then, of course, Ottawa. Now, to be honest, this isn't too bad. Um, strictly speaking, the only teams that I had in the correct spots were Toronto and Winnipeg, and everything else was wrong. But I, I don't think I was too far off. First of all, I correctly predicted that Toronto would win the division. That wasn't exactly a massive stretch and then I, I think you could argue that I did the same thing with my predictions for this upcoming season I definitely overestimated Calgary and Calgary the thing is I think Calgary has less easily defined weaknesses than a team like Winnipeg or a team like Edmonton either that or I'm not as familiar with them and for that reason I'm not as familiar with their weaknesses but anyway I, I, yeah, Calgary didn't finish this high. They uh, didn't get what they needed from certain um, forwards like Monaghan. Um, I thought they made some good um, moves in the previous offseason. They didn't get the goaltending they needed either, neither from Markstrom, who was good to start the year but didn't do so well after coming back from injury, and neither from David, David Riddick either. So they, in fact, finished um, in fifth. And it's by some distance that they finished in fifth. And the playoff teams were Edmonton finished ahead of Winnipeg. And I think, if I remember right, I was sort of debating between Edmonton and Winnipeg which one I should put higher. I figured they both have strong offenses. Obviously, Edmonton has McDavid and Dreisaitl, who are, you know, otherworldly players. But the Jets have a strong top six as well, and they also have the goaltending to kind of back everything up. Um, and neither of them are particularly renowned for their strength in uh, defending. So I, I gave Winnipeg the edge there. In fact, Edmonton finished, I think, nine points ahead of them. Um, and then Montreal came in fourth. The problem with predicting the North Division was, while it's not particularly strong, at least on paper, I don't think it was that strong. There are a lot of teams that I perceive to be decent, like these top six teams. You know, Ottawa, of course, had an outside shot. They had an awful start to the year. They shot themselves in the foot. They ended the year very strong, but I don't think many people saw it as a serious play playoff contender contender going into the year. But I thought it was totally feasible that any of these other teams uh, could make it. And of course, Vancouver uh, had the big series win against the Blues last year, uh, made it to the second round, lost Game Seven to Vegas. But they they shed some stuff during the off season. They lost uh, Tanev, who I mean I don't think I properly understood how important Chris Tanev was to the Canucks defense. They lost Markstrom, of course, and Holtby wasn't really able to adequately replace him. And Pearson, who went to Montreal and then proceeded to torch the Canucks. And in fact, the Canucks didn't even finish in six. They came last in the division. They were one point behind the Senators, and the Canucks, of course, had um, sort of uh, intervening factors, like the whole COVID situation. Obviously didn't do them any favors. Um... But yeah, they did end up coming in last. Uh, and yeah, the Senators with a strong end of the season came in sixth, but they were still far enough away from the playoffs that it wasn't really a close race at the end. And then Calgary really disappointed. Um, so I, I would say, and Montreal, I mean, yeah, I, figure, I figured Montreal would be... The thing is, I thought Montreal was weaker than Calgary, Winnipeg, Edmonton, and Toronto. Obviously, they made it into the playoffs with, I think, the worst regular season record of a playoff team and they went to the finals of course but uh yeah I don't think I don't think my predictions were all that far off in the north division and if I had anticipated Calgary being mediocre then I would have definitely had Montreal in a playoff spot okay so in the uh I'm gonna take these off the screen for a second um moving on to I don't remember what the divisions are called but um, the one with Boston and Pittsburgh and so on. So I had them in this order. I had Boston first, 
I had um, Pittsburgh, number two. I had Philadelphia, number three. I have to find these teams at the bottom of the screen. I had Washington, number four. And then I had the Rangers. And I, this, I remember this was a division that I had a particularly tough time uh, calling. I had the Rangers, then the Islanders, then the Sabres, and the the Devils. Okay, so I don't actually remember how this division ended, so I'm going to have to use Google real quick. But uh, I remember the... Uh, obviously, Buffalo was much worse than I anticipated. And I didn't think they were going to be that great, but they managed to fall below even the very small expectations I had for them. Okay, so this is the East Division is what they called it. And we're going to we're going to get to this in a second. Uh the Devils had a terrible year, but they were they were outshone by Buffalo in terms of of being shit. Um the Devils finished with a 19-30 and 7 record for 45 points. And the say which would have been it would have been last by some distance in the North Division, but the Sabres outclassed them with a 15, 34, and 7 record for 37 points. Um, so did it, did I actually place any of these teams in the correct spots? I had, I had won. The Rangers did indeed finish... The Rangers did indeed finish number 5. Um, that's the only thing I got right. So, awesome. Um, as far as how the final standings looked, yeah, this, this was a really tough division to call, and the reason is because... You know, okay, Boston is Boston, Pittsburgh is Pittsburgh, Philadelphia does whatever they want any given season, Washington is still Washington, the Rangers, I mean, Panarin, Zibanejad, they were adding Lafreniere, who had a tough rookie season, but, you know, I, with first overall picks playing in the NHL immediately, it's hard to know what to expect from them. Uh, and the Islanders, as always, I underestimated the Islanders. I never give the Islanders any credit, and this is why I had them to win the Atlantic Division this season, is because... Or sorry, the Metropolitan Division this season, because I never give them any credit, and they always, um, they always make me look very, very silly. So this year, I've decided to finally give them some credit, and they're probably going to disappoint me. Uh, but anyways, yeah, I had the Islanders too low. The Islanders, in fact, ended up coming in fourth, and they took the last playoff spot in this division. It's pretty close though. The top two teams, which were Pittsburgh and Washington, both had seventy-seven points. The Bruins had seventy-three. The Islanders had 71, and then the Rangers had 60, and the Flyers had 58. So the Flyers really, really um, did not meet my expectations for them. And obviously, Carter Hart had a really tough season. And I mean, when you don't really have a reliable goaltender, it's tough. And I don't, I don't know enough about the Flyers to state what else specifically went wrong for them because they did finish well a 25, 23, and 8 record. It's not fantastic for a team that I think they won a playoff round last year and. I mean, I, they certainly would have expected to get a playoff spot. I, I was getting sort of the distinct impression that Pittsburgh and, and Washington were sort of trending downwards. At least, like, if you look at what happened in the playoffs last season, or for Pittsburgh, even the, the pre-playoffs. But, I mean, things are different in the regular season, and these are traditionally strong regular season teams. Um, and they finished 1-2, and two and they both they both went out in the first round of the playoffs. So, I mean, what do I know? Boston... Um, Boston finished third. I had them winning the division, but again, I, I had no idea what to do with, with these teams. And, uh, let me switch these because these finished in this order. Um, so yeah, basically, I mean, the big, the big thing here was, I guess, underestimating the Islanders. These top three teams were fairly close to each other and they ended up in a different order than I expected. Buffalo was even worse than I thought. And the Flyers were, were much worse than I thought they were going to be. Um, specifically, I mean, the Sabres, they, I think it was last season that they had Taylor Hall, ended up trading him at the deadline. I thought that would do something for them, but Hall was, I mean, I guess, I guess fine. I mean, I, I how do you say this? He was, I guess he played okay hockey, but he just, he just didn't get the goals. Um, and yeah, Buffalo was obviously terrible. Okay. So that's what the, what the East division looked like. Going now to the Central Division, and this this division contains a couple of truly like incomprehensible things. But um, let's take these teams off the screen for a second. And okay, 
So I had the teams in this order. I had Tampa number one. Uh, where's Tampa? Here they are. I had Tampa number one. I had Carolina number two. I had Dallas number three. Um, I had Nashville number four. I had Columbus number five. I think you can see what I'm getting at. Uh, I had Florida number six, and then Chicago, and then Detroit. Okay, so um, let's address the obvious thing first of all. Florida at number six. I'm, I'm not entirely sure what I was doing there. I guess my reasoning was, well, okay, I, my reasoning was, I think, they had Dadunov and Hoffman left, who I guess I regarded as, I mean, not, you know, not core pieces of their team, like, to the extent of, of Barkov and, and Huberdo, but I regarded them as being important, but, okay, firstly, I don't think anybody expected Carter Verhecki to do what Carter Verhecki did this past season. Um, not that I think it's a fluke. It might be, but I, I don't necessarily think that's the case. But I don't think, you know, going in, very many people really expected that. And Duclair has been good for them as well. Have sort of uh, really solidified the offense in the absence of, of Dadunov and Hoffman. And I didn't really trust their goaltending either because Bobrovsky is Bobrovsky. And I, didn't, I don't think I really trusted Chris Drieger, but... Yeah, they obviously did much better than 6th place. Columbus being in 5th, I mean, I was, I think, still... I was still under the influence of that series against Toronto and then the series against Tampa Bay where they lost in 5, but, you know, they tried really hard. And the whole, you know, jones Wierenski pairing are the new Keith and Seabrook, except not old... Um, Keith and Seabrook in the sense of when Keith and Seabrook were, were an elite defense pairing and all that stuff. I, I mean, I don't know. Like this is, this, this order of teams is really, is really tough to explain in retrospect. Dallas, I had at number three. I mean, they had just gone to the finals. Um, so I mean, in, in fairness, like I, I, I can't remember to what extent, like the injuries that the stars had were known at the time I was making these predictions. I think I knew that Ben Bishop and Tyler Sagan would be out for a considerable period of time. But I figured, well, okay, the Kadobin and Edinger tandem got them to the finals. I think Sagan missed missed some time in the playoffs as well, if I'm not wrong about that. And, uh, well, I figured they were a solid enough team to carry them through. But they were... Yeah, they, they were somewhat disappointing. And then... Um, Tampa was less of an elite regular season team than we've seen them be before. To what extent that's like part of a small sample size of a short season or to what extent it's like, okay, we won the cup last year. We're going to not take the regular season off, but kind of take the regular season off. Um, and then Nashville, Nashville, I had in the right spot. I think they're the only team I had in the right spot. Um, good. So as far as, oh, and, and down here. I thought Chicago was going to be terrible. They really surprised me with their surge early on in the season. They ended up sort of uh, flattening out. But the early season performances of people like Kevin Lankinen and Pius Suter were very impressive. But ultimately, it didn't get them higher than sixth. And then, okay. So essentially, here's the thing. I had Dallas too high. Um, I had Nashville in the right spot. Carolina ended up winning the, the division by one point. Tampa ended up being a bit lower. Columbus was much, much worse than I expected. Detroit performed, well, okay, a 19-27-10 and 10 record for 48 points, which would have been would have been last place in the, in the North Division. But they were Columbus with the 18-26-12 record. Also 48 points, but fewer wins. Columbus was much, much, much worse than I saw them being. And Florida, again, I. it's very hard to justify this in retrospect, having Florida so low. But they ended up coming within a hair of winning this division, at least as far as the regular season goes. Dallas missed out on a playoff spot by four points. They had a ton of injury issues. And yeah, so, so Carolina won the division. Florida, 
I put them at six. They, in fact, finished second. Tampa, Nashville, Dallas missed the playoffs. Chicago, I guess Chicago exceeded my expectations a little bit because I thought they were going to be just terrible. Um, and they were only, like, normal bad. And at some point, they were genuinely contending for a playoff spot. Detroit was about what I expected, and then Columbus was much, much, much worse than I thought they would be. Now, uh, the West Division, in which um, there were two very strong teams, and some teams which were decent, or which I thought would be decent, um, and then some, some questionable teams. So, we had Colorado, and this was the order I put them in. I had Colorado... The Vegas Golden Knights were currently off my screen. The um, Blues, which I have to scroll down for again. The Blues, San Jose, and Minnesota, and Arizona, LA, and Anaheim. Now, The thing is, the the previous division we looked at, like, I look at it and things immediately stand out. Like, why did you have Florida so low, you goddamn idiot? Looking at this, the only thing that really stands out to me is San Jose being at f four, which is, this is the thing I always do with San Jose. I, I'm like, look, look at all the players on this team who have talent, and their depth is worse than it's been, especially at forward, and their defenseman, like, Vlasic is getting old, and... Burns and Carlson have had their issues, and the goaltending has not been good for a while. But I'm still, I like, the Sharks in my head, you know, I think of them as a good team. And I'm like, oh, the previous year must have been a fluke. They're going to be great this year. And then and then they just weren't. So, um, all right, here's what actually happened. Now, in this one, I was closer to being, like, right all across the table. I wasn't. I wasn't even half correct all across the table, but I was I was closer. Colorado did indeed win this division, um, at least according to the thing. I don't know what the tie breaks are. Both them and the Avalanche had 82 points. The Golden Knights had more wins. I don't know what the tie break is. But anyway, I in technicalities, I did have number one and number two right. Uh, and I had number eight right, which wasn't terribly difficult to predict. Um, Anaheim being last, just because... They definitely seemed like the team with the least potential in this division at the time, at least as far as not expecting to have Zegers and Drysdale for the whole season. And the yeah, the roster they were icing to begin with was yeah. Anyways, um, of course we know now uh, the Sharks' previous season was not really a fluke, and uh, they have they have clear problems with their with their roster, and they finished in seventh. And then I guess I un underestimated Minnesota a little bit. I don't think I knew how good uh, Kaprizov was. I guess among other things, but I guess it's mainly that. And their defense is strong, and I, I'm not sure I fully took that into account. So they actually finished third in this division. They were seven points off of being one of these uh, Golden Knights and, and Avalanche tier teams, but they were 12 points ahead of the Blues, who weren't quite as good as I guess I expected them to be. Like, I understand the losing Petrangelo is going to hurt a team, but I figure, eh, they're still the Blues. But they, uh, 63 points. Okay, that, that's, okay. Just for context, in the East Division, where Pittsburgh, Washington, Boston, and the Islanders made the playoffs, that's a particularly tough Division, at least the top, the four teams at the top were quite strong. But 63 points in that division would have left you out of the playoffs by eight points. And also in the Central Division, the Carolina, Florida, Tampa Bay, Nashville Division, you would have missed the playoffs by one, but you still would have missed the playoffs. You would have made it in the North Division. Of course, they did make it in the, um, in the West Division. The thing is, in the North Division, they would have made it by four. Um... That's the same amount of points that the Jets had. In the but in the in this division, the division they were actually in, they made it by nine because uh, the rest of these teams, everybody that didn't make the playoffs, was below five hundred. The Kings did better than the Sharks. Um, they showed some promise this season, um, this past season. Arizona was a, about what I expected. 
um, I guess. And then, yeah, so these these three, you know, Colorado, Vegas, and Anaheim, I had in the right spots. LA was about what I expected, but they turned out that San Jose was much worse than I expected, so they moved up a spot. And yeah, uh, St. Louis was worse than I expected, and Minnesota was better than I expected. Okay, so that those are my predictions from last season. I'm not sure if anybody particularly cares, but I wanted to... I wanted to do this sort of video mostly for my own interest. So yeah, there you go. I suck at predicting hockey. <laughs>